guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about how much training should you expect on the job as a brand new medical coder. If you're brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue. I'm a medical coder. Okay, guys. So uh, a lot of people have been asking me about this. Blue, I'm brand new. How much training on the job should I expect? Now, I will say this first <laughs> before I get into this answer. What I am going to tell you comes from years of experience being a new medical coder myself at the time in 2008, right? 2008, 2009 is when I was in my first year of coding. <laughs> and so during this time, I learned a lot and I've seen a lot. I've trained a lot of new coders in my 15 years, right? I'm going to be 16 next year, right? Uh, but... Um, I've, I've trained a lot of people in, in my time and I've seen how veteran coders respond to new coders and I've seen how new coders come in and, and their responses. Everybody is different. Every company is different. Every organization is different. Every, um, every supervisor, lead, and other staff, other medical coders, everybody is different. You'll find some medical coders that are just excited and they want to teach. They love to teach. They don't mind holding you by the hand. They don't mind coaching you along. Then you will meet a lot of other ones that are like, no one trained me, so I'm not training you. You got to learn. So to answer the question, how much on the job training will you get or should you expect? Expect zero. Expect zero training when it comes to the coding part. Now, I'm not telling y'all this to scare you. No, I'm telling you so that you are prepared. When you get certified as a medical coder, whether you have the CCS, CCA, CCSP, or the CPC, any one of these four are the four main medical coding certifications that employers look for. All you need is one. And when you walk in there with this certification or when you're applying with this resume, right, and you have your credential on there, this says that you are competent to code in any specialty, not an entry level, not a, oh, I'm, I don't have any experience, any specialty. You should be able to be dropped in maybe a few days of learning, you know, the, how the coding works there, and then you should be able to pick it up and go. Now, does this happen? No, because a lot of times people are very scared in the beginning because they feel unprepared because they go through these crappy programs that are, oh, we're two months and yeah, you can learn to be a medical coder in two months. Oh, it's just so disgusting. It's disgusting that there's two month programs, four month programs and those little quick six month programs. I can't stand it. I cannot stand it at all because you cannot expect people to know as much as we need to know to be competent in such a short amount of time. But then there's salespeople. Those are salespeople selling a dream and saying to people, oh yeah, you can do it. Don't, don't listen to her. You can work at home. You can do all these things. You can get all this high dollar amount of money and that kind of thing. And they're not telling them about the personal effort that they need to make, that the student needs to make about learning all the things that they need to learn medical terminology, anatomy. Another disgusting thing that I've heard is that they say, oh, well, you can learn that on the job. No, ma'am. No, sir. You cannot learn medical terminology and anatomy on the job. You know why? You're going to uh, sink really quickly. So you need to be learning those things. I say these things all the time on my channel, right? Because I want y'all to be prepared. Now, is this the bright and happy message that people uh, have come to become accustomed to when they're you know, hearing about it from a Facebook group or whatever. And all of a sudden I say the exact opposite and people get upset with me. It doesn't matter because I want y'all to be prepared. Wouldn't you want somebody to tell you the truth? This is exactly what's going to happen when you get out in the real world. When you are out there expecting that you're brand new and you're expecting them to train you, they will not. That's what you should expect. Now, yes, there's going to be some people that are just so, so excited and they want to teach. Whenever I see somebody new, I'm excited. I want to teach them. I want to help them. I want to coach them. But I also want to see from them that they are making the effort, that they're not waiting for me to spoon feed them because that I don't do. I do not do spoon feeding because to me, 
if you're getting into this industry, you should know that it's a research position. Like you have to do your research. You have to know to do your research. We have to know what doctors know while never having gone to medical school. You have to be uh, self-motivated to be able to do all of these things, even when you feel like, I, I don't know, I'm not, this, I'm not so sure about, you know, what I'm doing here, but I'm going to try. Students have the ability to do this. I tell you all too. make sure that you're studying for 20 hours per week. That's not just while you're in school, um, while you're preparing for your exam, of course, but even when you're out there looking for a job, you should still be practicing, maybe not as intensely as 20 hours but at least still getting some time with those workbooks in and still working through those. Because at least if you've got that part down, it won't be so scary once you get into the real world. What they will train you on, these employers though, what they will train you on is the electronic medical record. Because everybody uses a different version of an electronic medical record. Yes, there's a lot of people who use Epic, but those epic packages are going to be different. It's going to be different every place you go. So with that said, don't think that, you know, they won't teach you at least how to use that or teach you how to use the encoder because that's something that's specific to their facility. They will expect to have to show you that because of course you're brand new. They would have to show somebody who's a veteran too about something like that. So with that said, you know, you want to make sure that you expect right away that you're going to be on your own and that you're going to have to learn to figure these things out. Yes, there may be times when you have a question, you're not really sure and you know, but you've done your research. You can show how you've done your research. You can show where you looked it up in the book or where you looked it up in coding clinic or CPT assistant. And you'll find out more about that when you're using the encoder. But you know, when you are doing those things and you can show that you made an effort to try to figure it out on your own, that's going to go a long way into getting other veteran coders to help you. Because if you're just saying, this is too hard, I can't figure this out, and you have made no effort to try to learn that on your own, you're going to be out on your own alone. And you're going to end up losing your job if you don't watch out. Because um, they're going to see that you're not even trying to make an effort. And oh yes, they will talk about you. They will talk about you know, if you're trying or not trying. And now I'm not, again, I'm not saying it to be scary or, you know, frighten you or anything like that. But what I am telling you is so that you are prepared. Now, again, we, you're going into an industry that is predominantly women. This is a predominantly woman driven industry. <laughs> There's a lot of women in this industry. I do encourage males to get involved in medical coding because of the simple fact that I think it would be great um, if more men got into the industry because it would even things out. <laughs> um, but there, I, I do see some more men joining and I'm very glad for that because I think that it is very important for this industry to become more balanced. At least that's just my opinion anyway. Uh, but with that said, you know, again, when you are going in there as a brand new coder, it is your responsibility, guys. It is your responsibility that you have to grab with both hands um, it is your responsibility to show and demonstrate that you're making an effort, okay? And, you know, again, you may be told right up front, this is not a training ground. If you cannot make production, if you cannot make accuracy, we will let you go. It's not the time to panic. They're just telling you what the consequences are because that's business. It's a business and people have to be able to show okay, well, we're working with this person or this person is new. So we're going to give them, you know, at least 90 days to get going and make sure that they're, you know, they're able to, to get going somewhere. Uh, but if you can't show improvement in 90 days, they can just let you go. And especially if you're on like a probationary period in the beginning, they can let you go for anything. So you really need to show that you really want this. You have to show, um, that you you want to make the effort to learn okay guys and you will get there because we all went through this as medical coders all of us and for some people they have gotten into a position and they sort of, sort of just stayed in that same position and so they got really comfortable with that this is this field is not about comfort 
if you really want to be successful, if you really want to enjoy what you're doing and get to a point in your career where, you know, you are just so excited to do this that you will always do this and, you know, you're always going to be interested in learning more. That's the best thing because a lot of people will try to wait. Oh, I'll be happy once I retire. And then when they get to retirement age, their whole life has gone by. And what did they, what did they do for it? They were in a job that they quote unquote didn't enjoy. And, you know, they were just waiting till retirement. And now that they're retired, they don't know what to do. You know, you can enjoy your career now. You can enjoy your life and your life's work right now. Uh, but you have to show up. You have to be present because these employers are not going to hold your hand. Other veteran coders will not hold your hand. You may find some. And they're a diamond in the rough sometimes because especially when you get into these organizations and you're just trying to find somebody to kind of like help guide you through something, sometimes you'll find people who are receptive and sometimes you just will not. So expect that you won't have that. Don't go in expecting them to hold your hand and do those things for you. It's that expectation and that entitlement that a lot of people are uh, demonstrating now uh, and it's not a young person thing. This is at any age, any age thing. Okay, guys, it's not just young people that are doing it. It's a lot of people that are doing it. And it's just the time that we live in now. Everything is so instant when you think about it, right? You know, you get on social media and everything is just instant gratification. This field is not instant gratification. So if you are being hard on yourself, that you're not catching on fast enough, that you're not working fast enough, you need to work on that for yourself. Now, I have always said I don't recommend things that shorten people's attention spans like the Tiki Talk. I don't recommend that. But people will still ask me, well, what channels do you recommend on TikTok? I don't recommend TikTok at all. Because again, shorten attention span. You want everything in a minute and a half or one minute or 30 seconds. No, ma'am, no, sir. To me, if you're going to spend time doing this, this means that you're committed to taking the time to learn these things. Yes, when you're listening to something, you can speed it up so that you can listen a little bit faster and it doesn't take quite as long. But again, it goes back to this is not an instant gratification field, period. Okay, so that's just something that y'all need to know, because if y'all are going in, walking in, thinking that. Is you're going to be even more frustrated because then you're going to be thinking, well, I got into this thinking that people were going to help me. Who's going to help me? No one has to help you. It's when you start helping yourself that you'll see others want to help you because you're helping yourself. You ever hear about that? You know, like when people say, well, you know, you have to, um, you have to help yourself before, you know, others will want to help you. If you're not making any effort to learn more, to study more, or to, to learn medical terminology, to learn anatomy, and that's just the basic things on some people, right? That medical terminology and anatomy, they think they can just skip over that and, oh, it's, it's in the electronic record, medical record. All I have to do is push it through. No. If you look at those um, AHIMA standards of, uh, or ethics, right? And that's not just for people who are with AHIMA. That is all medical coders that follow those ethics and those ethical standards that we have to code correctly and we have to code based on what is there. And if it's not right, then we need to provide education. That's a part of our ethics. So that's something that you all need to know. Okay. And again, it's about showing up and you're saying, you know what? I want to be in this field, but stop talking the talk and start walking the walk. And what I mean by that is a lot of people say, oh, I love this. I love this. And I want to do this. And, you know, I, I just enjoy medical coding, uh, but I don't know where to begin. How can you love it, but you don't know where to begin? Well, Blue, I just don't understand it. Okay, so then how do you love it? It's an infatuation, which you got going. But you're infatuated with like a fantasy of what you think it is because it's what somebody else sold to you. They're not telling you about the long hours of study. They're not telling you about the frustration that you may feel, the tears, you know, and all of these things that you may go through when you're learning this stuff. I went through this. I went through this. There was several times when I got dropped in 
and said, here, Blue, go ahead. And I'm thinking, man, I got to figure this stuff out, <laughs> you know. But I wasn't afraid I would get frustrated because I didn't get it. And I didn't get it. And then, then I finally figured it out on my own to go to Google. And I started Googling. And that was how I started, like, connecting the dots. And it started to make more sense. And I don't have to tell the story again about how uh, I got put with my new supervisor at the time. And then uh, my old supervisor was like, oh, I'm going to teach her a lesson. So I got put into the same day surgery clinic. That's fine. I learned to do same day surgery. So that's okay. <laughs> and that served me well later. Okay. Uh, so, but even though it's frustrating, I didn't back down from that challenge because I'm not going to let anybody see me sweat. Not when it comes to that. So that's why I have to like sit here and like, how can I figure this out? And I, again, back then I wasn't as evolved. I mean, I didn't know all the things that I know now as far as with these books and everything, um, with all of the, the helpful books that are out there. And I tell you guys all the time where you can find helpful books, Optum, optumcoding.com. This is not an ad for them. I know I always talk about them, but the channel is growing and there's new people. And I know this because I still get the questions. Where do I get started? Okay, I don't answer those questions anymore, guys. I don't because of the simple fact I got 1,100 videos on my channel. Y'all can find the video where I talk about it because <laughs> I talk about it quite often. How to get started and where to go and what's the first thing that you should do. And I have the independent study video that has all of the books that you need and things like that. Um, so if uh, I don't want to get too far off on the <laughs> subject, um, but I want you guys to know this. I want you guys to know that when you are starting, don't expect them to train you. Do not expect to have your hand held and do not expect to find an entry level job. If you are making the mistake of looking for an entry level job right now, that's another problem too, guys. Entry level jobs are going to have thousands of people applying because everybody is looking for those entry level words. They want somebody to hold their hand. You guys can do this. And sometimes when I hear from people who have studied on their own, they've got the certification on their own. And then when they get out of the big bad world, they're like, I need somebody to train me. You didn't have somebody training you when you was going through independent study, right? And you still managed to pass the certification exam. So you can do it. You can absolutely do anything that you, that it, you put your mind to. Anything that you want to do, you absolutely can do. But you have to stop thinking that people will help you because they won't. And that's just the, that's just the honest truth in life is that people will not help you. And sometimes you have to find your own way. You have to, to do your research. You have to be able to do all these things. I get messages constantly from people who are saying, basically, hold my hand, hold my hand. And I won't. Because if I do, you're never going to learn. You're never going to learn. But if you say, Blue, I went to this Optum, Optum website and, and I found all the books and, you know, thank you so much because, you know, now I've been working with them. Like you said, I heard your words and, you know, I'm doing the 20 hours. It started to make sense. Now I'm starting to get it. There is one thing that I'm confused on, though. Now you have my attention because this says that you have been trying this is the same thing, that that same energy those, those employers are going to be looking for. I get very excited when I start talking about this kind of thing. So I sometimes <laughs> get stumble over my words because I get so excited. I'm trying to get the message out and I can't get it out fast enough. Is that you guys can do this. You know, you absolutely can. But do not expect your employer to sit here and hold your hand, guys. Because it is about, you know, falling down and getting right back up. You know, a lot of times when you look around and you see like people who are, I, the other day I got a message from a lady who is complaining because she was saying that, um, her family doesn't support her, but she lives with her family. She's in her mid forties and they don't support her, I guess, going into medical coding, but, um, she lives with them. That's support. Hello. <laughs> that is support. Then she complained to me about her parents and you know, no, I, I don't want to hear people who complain about their parents. I don't, I, I lost my mother. I don't want to hear you complain about your parents. All right. Especially when they're helping you and they're supporting you and you're old enough 
to be able to, uh, and you're educated as well, LPN, this person wants, LPN. So you have education, you have background, you can certainly uh, go forth and go out and do those things and do the research that you need to in order to get to this career that you want to get into. No one has to, to give you a push. That has to be on you, all right? No one else is going to be able to do that but you. And so if you're looking for, uh, this other thing I wanted to say too before I wrap this up, if you're looking for other people to approve of what you're doing, again, you're wasting your time because people will sometimes look at what you're doing when you want to be a medical coder and they'll say, oh, that's going to go away and blah, blah, blah. They've got all these ideas, have nothing to do with them. They know nothing about our industry. I know about our industry because I've been in it for 15 years, 16 years of my life. When you think about the time that uh, before I was studying, before I got uh, certified. Okay. So 16 years altogether, give or take, right? That I've been in this industry and I know what it is. They've been saying that since 16 years ago. Okay. And I'm sure they said it long before then too. Oh, it's going to go away. You know, nothing. Okay. If you're saying that, because again, artificial intelligence does not have critical thinking. I'm just saying, but if you're waiting for other people to be approving of you in your career and what you're doing, why, why are you waiting around wasting time again, more wasting time? Because you're waiting on somebody to say that they approve of what you're doing. You want them to support you. Some people will never support you. Some people that may be your family, it may be your best friends. They will not support you because they want to see you stay where they are, right? They don't want to see you succeed. But then some of you are very lucky and you have really good families who are very supportive or you may have somebody who's younger than you looking up to you as a role model. You never know who 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 is looking at you as a role model. But if you're sitting here waiting for people to, you know, support you and do all those things, you could be waiting around a long time for some of you. OK, so don't do that, guys. You need to develop that very independent mindset and Stop waiting around for approval. And if you tell me, well, Blue, I put out 150 applications. I had a client, a young mother, who said, Blue, I put out a thousand applications before somebody took me on. And I'm not telling y'all that to scare you. I'm telling y'all what this young mother did. She did not let the fact that she had so many people tell her no, stop her. And I was like, wow, that is really awesome. And she has a great certification. She's got a lot of really, really awesome energy. And that's what I love about people like that. She says, I just didn't want to give up. I was not going to give up. Good for her. And she's working. And she's doing very well. So that's the thing, guys. A lot of you don't want to get, you get a little bit uncomfortable. And then it's too much for you. Guys, you can't do that. Not in this life. This life is has its trials, right? It has its trials, it has its tribulations, it has all these things, right? But if you are just going to let one little just knock down, just take you out, you're going to do that for every single career that you have. Every single one that you attempt. And that's a lot of wasted time and a waste amount of money too, okay? So if you're in this, stick with it, okay? If you are out there applying, make sure that you're ready. Show that you're ready. Those are the people that get hired, the people that show that they are ready, not the people who are running around, excuse me, feeling sorry for themselves, thinking that somebody needs to hold their hand. No one will, guys. And again, I'm not telling y'all this to discourage you. I'm telling this to empower you. I want you to know that they're going to expect you to be ready. I would want to know that I need to be ready. I am naturally this way anyway. <laughs> um, although in the beginning, I was kind of confused. I was like, you know, I got the certification. Why don't they want me? You know, what, I'm passing these assessment tests. What is going on? But I did not know that I just had to keep pushing just a little bit more till I got where I needed to go. And that, by doing that, by going that extra step, and by going into something that going to the temp agency for medical professionals was finally where I finally got my first job. But then I when I tell y'all that, then some of y'all write to me, y'all actually take the time to write to me and say, I don't want to do that. I want a real job. I said the same thing, but I still did it. And look, 
It got me my first job. That led that helped me to gain the skills to get to my second job. That second job got me my skills that got me here to my forever home. All within a span of a year. All because I said yes. All because I showed up and I was willing to be like, okay, I can figure this out. And my whole career has been, okay, I'll figure this out. And now look, when I go to work, I don't feel like I'm working. Yes, there's some chore things that I do at work, but I don't feel like I'm working. Okay? And y'all can be that same way too. But you have to show up. And you have to say, you know what, I'm going to keep applying. And when I get hired, if they don't want to train me, that's okay. I can figure this out. Because yes, you can. And with that said, I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, have a safe and happy holiday. And I will see y'all next week. Bye.